Hey crew, John G, Modern Design, back again. Water Feature Design Series number six. It's all about pumps. I wanna teach you guys how to pick the perfect pump for your water feature. I'm gonna help you understand the difference between a couple of different types of pumps. I'm gonna help you understand what a pump curve is, how it works. I'm gonna teach you about total dynamic head, and I'm gonna teach you how just changing one simple thing at the end, like the size of your plumbing, can gain you actually 60% more water flow by changing nothing other than the diameter of your pipe, diameter of your pipe. You guys, stay tuned. I am gonna whip up some serious techno stuff to make your water feature builds better than ever. Guys, there's a couple reasons that you wanna select the right pump for your water feature application. The first reason is efficiency, electrical efficiency. One pump uses a whole lot more electricity than another pump. Just because it moves the right amount of water doesn't mean it's the right pump. You do the math. If you're paying $20 a month more in electricity over five years, ouch. Just saying, that's one little tweak that maybe switching a pump out might save you. The second reason it's important for you to pick the right pump for your water feature project is longevity. It's about finding the sweet spot for your pump, guys. Let me explain to you what that means. When you find a pump sweet spot, think of your car going down the highway. When you're on the interstate and you've got that puppy in drive or overdrive, the engine's running at just the right speed to get you moving at the pace that you need to be moving at with the right RPMs so that your car engine is running efficiently, RPMs are low, everything's smooth sailing. Okay, you pick the wrong pump for the wrong application, you are now driving down the interstate in second gear. Yup, it still works. Is it good for your car? Nope. Is it gonna last very long? Nope. That's why it's important that you understand the right pump for the right project. Boom, AquaSurge 5000, asynchronous pump. This is one of my favorite pumps in the world, guys, because the asynchronous pump is high efficiency, it's, it's planet friendly. I'm just saying it lasts for a long time. This one's got a three year warranty on it and it doesn't use much power. It moves a lot of water for a little power. So in the circumstance where you don't have a high waterfall, you can move a good bit of water for a little bit of electricity. This guy has a little more work because you have the housing on top. So I would say it's, it's a bit more maintenance in order to, to keep it clean, to keep this housing cleaned off, but it won't suck up a frog, a fish or anything else through these little grooves. So that's important. If the application's right, this is my favorite pump because they are rock solid. Let's talk now about the solids handling pump. This guy right here is a monster. You can see in the end of here, see that hole? If it can fit in there, it can pretty much get through the impeller and come out through the other end. So that you have to protect your wildlife from this pump. But this pump will just move a lot of water in the right circumstances. It doesn't get clogged up by a leaf or a twig or whatever. So if you have somebody who can't do more maintenance of cleaning like this, this would be a better pump to go to. If you have to pump your water higher, typically these types of pumps, the solids handling pumps, have a higher lift capacity, but a higher electrical requirement as well. So that's the pros and cons. If I can use this guy, I always do. A lot of times, I will use both of these pumps in combination. So if we're doing a big pond with jets and whatnot, we'll use a low head pump, a high efficiency pump to move water down at water level for as little electrical as possible. Then we'll use one of these high head pumps to push the waterfalls and move more water up to a higher level. That's what you're gonna know about the difference of these two style pumps. So the next thing we want you guys to understand is a pump curve and what total dynamic head means because those are very important terms in order for you to understand how much water you're really gonna get out the top end. So first thing I want you to understand is a pump curve. A pump curve is exactly what it sounds like. It's a graph that you're gonna get from the manufacturer of each pump. And at the beginning of the curve, it's gonna show you how much water this pump is capable of pushing just right here. If it's not lifting the water at all, it's just moving water from, from here to here. It's, that's gonna be its maximum flow rate. That's gonna be the high end of your pump curve. The far end of your pump curve is how far can it actually lift that water before it can't lift it anymore. 
So the top of the pump curve is a zero flow rate. Maximum flow, no flow at all. In the middle of that is your pump curve. Now, the sweet spot is the point you need to understand. You wanna pick a pump for your project that is running in the sweet spot of that curve. And again, we're back to the RPMs on your car. Think about it. You got down at the bottom, your sweet spot's gonna be that mid-range where the pump is just running at its best operating speed in order to last as long as it can possibly last. It can be in the high end of the sweet spot, it can be in the low end of the sweet spot. It's still happy in that zone. But once you get on the outside zone, you're like, eh, it still runs there, but not so great. And then once you get to the extremes of it, it's like, yep, yeah, it's gonna do it, but it ain't gonna last. Guys, that's what that curve's gonna mean. Now you have to understand total dynamic head in order to understand how to figure out if you're gonna be in the sweet spot on the pump. So let's talk about understanding total dynamic head, what that looks like, and then you guys are gonna have all the pieces you need to put together the perfect pond pump combination based on each and every design. All right, Mr. Wizard, total dynamic head is the difference between the pressure at the suction end of your pump and the outlet of your pipe. Did I lose you there? Let me make it easy for you. If you go and Google this thing and type in total dynamic head calculator, guess what? Boom, up pops a bunch of choices. I go to Pump World because that's just where I went the first time. And that's where I always go. It's easy for me to make that work. It's going to have a little chart. You go down past the ads a little bit and there's this little section where it has a kind of a calculator in a box and it's going to do the math for you. Guys, there's some things you're going to have to do but it ain't real hard. So let's say for instance, we're gonna start with a project that I've designed and I just whip these numbers up off the top of my head. This Surumi solids handling pump, the 5PL, I'm gonna put this into the system. So what I have to do is I have to start out, the first box is gallons per minute. Well, I have a rating on this pump in gallons per hour. I know the maximum flow rate at the very low end of this pump curve, 5,300 gallons per hour. Okay, that is divided into gallons per minute. Just divide by 60. Now you have gallons per minute, which is 88 gallons per minute, guys. The next little box, you're gonna plug in inside diameter of the pipe that you're using. Typically on our jobs, we're using two inch flexible PVC. So I'm gonna put two inches into that box. The next thing is gonna be the length of your run. Now, one of the benefits of flexible pipe is that you don't have fittings. I'll talk about those in a minute. But I'm gonna have a 35 foot run of two inch flexible pipe. So that I'm gonna plug in. The next thing you're gonna to need to know is your lift differential. That is how high are you pumping the water up. So for my example, I put in 10 feet. I'm lifting the water 10 feet. I'm gonna plug the number 10 into that box. Then it's gonna ask me what kind of pipe it is. I'm gonna choose rubber lines because I'm using flexible PVC. And then I'm gonna hit the thing on the end and it's gonna give me a number. The number that comes out is 15. That is total dynamic head. But don't stop yet, there's a secret that's not in the box. You have elbows. Every 90 degree elbow that you're gonna put in your line adds one foot. So I'm just gonna say two because typically we'll throw two in there somewhere. There'll be one coming out of the skimmer, one going in the biological filter somewhere, typically two 90s. So I'm gonna add two feet ahead. That puts me at a total dynamic head of 17 on this example. Guys, you know what that means? Now I can go back to the pump curve that comes with the pump. So I go into the Surumi 5PL pump curve and I can see that at 17 feet of total dynamic head, I have about 2,500 gallons per hour. This is what most people don't understand. In this instance, this Surumi 5PL is gonna give me 2,500 gallons per hour actual flow rate out the top of the waterfall. I don't care that it is a 5,300 gallon per hour pump. You're getting 2,500 gallons per hour out the top of the waterfall if you don't change anything in this equation. So I have a little super special thing that I'm gonna share with you. Go into where you put in the two and change that to a three. The total dynamic head changed to 11. When I add my two fittings, that puts me at 13. The difference in the 13 number and the 17 number on this particular pump curve is 60% more flow out of the same pump 
for the same electricity. It goes up to almost 4,000 gallons per hour from 2,500 just by increasing the diameter of your pipe. Guys, that's huge. You just did that without changing anything but a length of pipe. In your entire water feature design, you have increased your customer's flow by 60%. I'm just saying that's amazing. Understand this stuff, guys. It's simple. Play with the calculator, try different pumps, try different configurations, try different pipe sizes. You will be amazed at what you learn and what you can do. I hope this was an awesome experience for you. All right, guys. That's the end of water feature design video number six about choosing the right pump, understanding pump curve, understanding total dynamic head. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up. Tell me that you liked it. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us every day on Facebook. My boys are doing cool things out in the field while I'm sitting here back at the shop teaching you everything I've got stored up in here. Have an awesome day. See you.